we have a dart and we want to throw it at a bullseye and we want to have it such that the initial velocity is entirely in the x direction. So it kind of has an angle of zero. So that means that we have to have our dart be some distance above the bullseye. We're going to say 50 centimeters. And then it's going to travel in a path like this over 3 meters. We want to know how fast must we throw the dart So one thing to do would be also to draw, so this is a y versus x graph, would be to also draw a vy versus vx graph. And nicely enough for this, right, we're throwing our dart perfectly horizontally, so we can show that this is vi. And from this, we can say that vxi is equal to vi, and that vyi is equal to zero. So also in our sketch steps, we can have a couple of other graphs. ax, ay, vx, vy, and sx. SY, with time as the x-axis for all of these. So if we do this, then our SY versus time graph is going to start and go down. Our VY is going to start horizontally and then go down, and our AY is going to be a negative constant. Our AX is going to be 0, our VX is going to be a positive constant, and our SX is going to travel in this way. So having all of this, we can start with our knowns and our unknowns. Well, we just got these. We know that VXI equals VI, but we're trying to solve for our unknown VI, so we want to have it over on here. We know that our VYI is equal to 0. We know our acceleration, the x, is 0. We know our acceleration, the y, is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We know that the initial position, so right, aligned with the bullseye, but um, back where the dart is, is probably a good origin right around here. So we can say that our initial position in the y is 50 centimeters, which is 0 0.5 meters. Our final position in the y would then be 0 meters. Our initial position in the x would be 0 meters. And our final position in the x would be 3 meters. We haven't written time anywhere in our knowns, so our time will have to be an unknown. So now it's time to solve. So as we look through what we need, we don't have anything from our first two equations, so we're going to have to use our second two equations. For equation 2, I know SFx, it's 3 meters, so in the x direction. I know Six, it's 0, I'm not going to write it. I know Vix is Vi times t, and I know Ax is 0, so I just have that. So I don't know t and I don't know Vi, so I'm in a little bit of a trouble. But let's look at the y direction then. My initial position is 0 meters. My initial position in the y is 0 0.5 meters. My initial velocity in the y is 0, so we're not going to write it. And then I have plus 1 half times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times the time squared. So in my equation y, I don't have a second unknown. I can just solve for my time by bringing this over here. So I have 4.9 meters per second squared times squared equals 0 0.5 meters times squared equals 0 0.5 meters over 0.9 meters per second squared, which gives me a time of 0 0.32 seconds. So now what I can do is I can use this time up in this equation, so back in my x equation, using a better pen, back in my x equation, I have 3 meters 
equals vi times 0 0.32 seconds. And so then 3 meters divided by 0 0.32 seconds is equal to my initial velocity, which plugging into our calculator gives us 9.375 meters per second. So getting a good sketch, and we need multiple sketches, really helps us out. Having the equations written out for us so we can immediately start thinking and start comparing, and having our knowns and unknowns helps with that. Once we have that, then we can just write the equations that will actually help us relate our knowns to our unknowns and see if we can find if we have any one equation, one unknowns. If we do, immediately solve them. If we don't, either keep looking or start doing substitutions. And so then from that, we can then get our equation.